board. Everyone sorted. Everyone got their notepads, pens. Do you love Jesus? Yeah. I love Jesus. I was just worshiping at the back there. I just was taken into almost a vision. I just saw this vision of the coin church on a Sunday morning. And uh, I saw down at the front there was just rows upon rows of teenagers worshipping God. <laughs> and uh, I was reminded of times in my car where I sing the loudest. I don't know what people think of me when they're walking past, but my music is blaring and I'm just crying out to God and worshipping Him. And I don't know where you find those times, maybe it's in your room. I just saw this volume of noise, I just heard it. And uh, I just believe that God wants to prophesy over you tonight. Worshippers, praisers, jumpers, shouters. Don't be ashamed of the voice that God has given you. Don't be ashamed to sing out loud and proud because you love God. Just see that thing so clear. Do it, God. Do it, God, in the name of Jesus. Sweet. We are looking at Daniel chapters 1 to 3. Last night we looked at Daniel chapter 1. Anyone tell me what happens in Daniel chapter 1? Daniel goes on a diet. Daniel goes on a diet. Daniel goes on a diet. Yeah. They get new names. They go on a diet. Why do they go on a diet? They eat vegetables. Why? Because... They said it was better than meat that was served by the kingdom. Yeah, so the meat was basically, would have been offered up to the Babylonian idols, and so they didn't want to defile themselves by eating that meat. And so that's, that's meat that's offered to another god, not to our god. And so, you know what? We refuse to eat that. And they stood up. And what was the main, what was the title of the talk? <coughs> Where are the leaders? And who are the leaders? We are. Yes. You. You are. And me. We are. And so tonight we're looking at Daniel 2. The title is Get Some Desire in You. Oh yes. Get Some Desire in You. What I'm going to do is very different from yesterday. I'm going to read through Daniel chapter 2 with you. And we're going to just start picking things out of it. And then we're going to move on and talk about something more specific at the end. So if you go to Bible, Daniel chapter 2. I'm there. God wants to encounter you tonight. Do you believe that? Yeah. He really wants to meet you. He really wants to change you. He wants to give you new gifts, he wants to give you new revelation of who he is, and he wants to send you from this place in love with him even more. Do you want that? A couple of people want that. Who wants it? I really want it. I really want it. Daniel chapter 2. Who's not got a Bible? Um, we've got some Bibles around. I've seen some around. I think there's some under that chain. Can you give us some out? It's probably, it's, it's very much, oh, can you give some out of the world joy? It's very much worth you having one in. Daniel chapter 2, near the end of the Old Testament. Seven, eight books before the end of the book? Something like that. Oh. Oh. Sweet, here we go. In the second year of his reign, Nebuchadnezzar, great name as we've already established. Gareth and I are both going to call our sons Nebuchadnezzar. In the second year of his reign, Nebuchadnezzar had dreams that troubled him, and sleep deserted him. 
I want to stop there. Anyone here ever had dreams that have troubled them or sleep deserted them? Wow. Let's stop right there. Jesus is the answer. Jesus is the one that brings peace. He's the Prince of Peace. He's the Lord of Lords. He's the one that can break in. Manny, do you want to quickly come and share us really quickly what happens? I love this story. <laughs> Manny's on fire tonight. <laughs> yeah. um, basically, a while ago, it was like before West Point, um, I'd been having like really bad dreams and they're about like all our youth leaders dying. And um, they were like, oh, they were horrible. Like, I'd wake up like in tears, they were horrible. And, um, and then we went to West Point and like they kept carrying on. And um, I told Nathan about them and stuff like that. And like, I think I was, I was like praying, but I just didn't really go to God with that. And so we went to West Point and um, um, Dun is it Duncan, yeah, Duncan um, the guy at West Point, he was like, um, <laughs> he was like, I feel like I've got, um, like, God saying there's someone in here that's got, like, having really bad nightmares. And then I was like, oh, that's me. But I didn't do anything. Like, he said, put your hand up, but I didn't want to. And then um, I went to his wife um, in the girls' meeting that we went to the next day, and I just, like, asked her to pray with me about it. And then she got Duncan in, and then, so we prayed about it, and then she, she felt like, God was going to turn my dreams into prophecies instead. And that night, um, I went to bed and I went to sleep. And, um, <laughs> and I woke up. And I woke up, yeah. And um, so I had that. I had this dream for all the girls at um, the West Point. And it was like a prophecy dream. And it was like, oh, I was so crazy. Like, um, oh, oh, I missed out. No, no, the first <laughs> night. Um, I had a different dream, but it was like a good dream about our youth leaders. And then the next night, so I prayed again, and the next night um, I had a prophecy for all the girls. And um, it like, it like really related to loads of the girls in there. And then ever since then, I've just been having like dreams like about like prophecies and stuff like that. So like praying. Jesus is the answer. If you're currently going through struggles in your dreams that actually sleep deserts you and you're kind of it's just you're going through nightmares or something. I just want to pray for you right now is that all right father we want to thank you that you're in control and you have authority and so every bad dream in this place we command you to go in the name of Jesus you have no authority here anymore we pray Lord tonight for good dreams Lord we pray for prophetic dreams Speak and do supernatural things amongst us, I ask, in the name of Jesus. Amen. 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 We're only on verse 1. Have you seen how long the chapter is? <laughs> chapter, uh, verse 2. So the king gave orders to summon the divine priests, mediums, sorcerers, and the Chaldeans to tell the king his dreams. When they came and stood before the king, he said to them, I have had a dream and an anxious dream. To understand it, I want to stop there as well. Things like horoscopes, other types of witchcraft and things like that, stay away from them. There's power in them, which is not good. And I just want to encourage you and stir you right at the start today. Stay away from them. Our God is stronger, he's better, he's greater, he's more powerful than any of these things. And Daniel, in this book called Nebuchadnezzar, looks to these guys. And as we quickly find out, they don't have the answer. God does. Verse 4. The Chaldeans spoke to the king. May the king live forever. Tell your servants the dream and we will give the interpretation. The king replied to the Chaldeans, my word is final. If you don't tell me the dream and its interpretation, you will be torn limb from limb. And your houses will be made into a garbage dump. Nice. But if you make the dream and its interpretations known to me, you'll receive gifts, a reward, and great honour from me. So make the dream and its interpretation known to me. They answered a second time. May the king tell the dream to his servants, and we will give the interpretation. 
The king replied, I know for certain you are trying to gain some time, because you see that my word is final. If you don't tell me the dream, there is one decree for you. You have conspired to tell me something false or fraudulent until the situation changes. So tell me the dream, and I will know you can give me its interpretation. The Chaldeans answered the king, No one on earth can make known what the king requests. Consequently, no king, however great and powerful, has ever asked anything like this or of any diviner priest, medium or Chaldean. What the king is asking is so difficult that no one can make it known to him except the gods whose dwelling place is with mortals. These guys quickly realised this is impossible. What, what you're asking is just... This is absolutely ridiculous, King Nebuchadnezzar. You can't ask a thing like that. No God can even do this. Yes, he can. Yes, he can. Our God can do it. Our God can give dreams and bring interpretations to those who didn't even have them in the first place. Our God can. Your God can. Your God is powerful far greater than you know. You know that God is bigger and better than you know. Do you know that? Whatever your view of God is, it's tiny in comparison to the real bigness of God. I love that. I've kind of been blown away by that over the last few months. Just thinking, God is better than I think. He's bigger than I think. Where do we get up to? Verse... 12. Because of this, the king became violently angry and gave orders to destroy all the wise men of Babylon. The decree was issued and the wise men were to be executed. And they searched for Daniel and his friends to execute them. Then Daniel responded with tact and discretion to Ariok, the commander of the king's guard, who had gone out to execute the wise men of Babylon. I love that verse. Daniel responded with tact and discretion. What does yours say, Kieran? Verse 14. When Ariok, the commander of the king's guard, had gone out to put to death the wise men of Babylon, Daniel spoke to him with wisdom and tact. Wisdom and tact. Brilliant. Anyone got something different? Those kind of two words. What does yours say, James? Uh, then Daniel spoke with pretty casual to Ariok. Prudent counsel, great. Prudence and discretion. Prudence and discretion. Any other different from yeah. what have you got, Sean? Wisdom and sound judgment. Wisdom and sound judgment. Don't you just love different translations? I love it. It just gives a fuller kind of kind of just knowledge of what, what's being talked about. Daniel had tact and discretion. I wonder whether that describes you. I wonder whether people around in your school and college would describe you as someone with tact and discretion. When you kind of go into your college or school and kind of want to share the gospel with your friends, are you full of tact and discretion or are you just non-existent? Are you thinking, okay, how can I help this person get to understand God? I don't want to win an argument, I want to win their hearts for God. We, um, a number of years ago, I went out into the town centre with a guy named Phil Moore, who was the evangelist in the coin many years ago. Many years ago, just a few years ago. And uh, we went out and did this evangelism, and we used this sheet, and it had a whole load of questions on it. And what I loved is that as we asked these questions, we kind of were asking questions like, what would you describe yourself as? And uh, they could take atheist, Christian, Muslim, Hindu, agnostic, whatever it is, and they were ticket. And so you'd often get atheists and go, okay, atheist. And then later on, they would be like, okay, if you could ask God one question, what would it be? And they're like, okay, yeah, I would ask him, why is there so much suffering in the world? That's really interesting, that you're willing to ask God questions, but you don't, I thought you didn't believe in God. And kind of going back to this original kind of question, and it was done with tact and discretion of actually not trying to put someone down, but in a way of actually trying to help them understand clearly you do believe in a God and you do believe there are consequences of that and trying to bring that around. Daniel acted with tact and discretion. Just thought it was a great lesson to learn from me. 
he asked Ariok, the king's officer, why is the decree from the king so harsh? Again, Daniel stands up as bold, puts his life on the line. Then Ariok explained the situation to Daniel. So Daniel went and asked the king to give him some time so that he could give the king the interpretation. Wow. I wonder if you would take that responsibility on you. So someone's had a dream, and they said, I know this dream is important, they're in power and command of you, and they could kill you if you don't give you them the dream and the interpretation. Daniel's like, yep, give me some time, I'll get it. That's his faith in God. Then Daniel went to his house and told his friends, Hananiah, Mishael, and Azariah, about the matter, urging them to ask the God of heaven for mercy concerning this mystery. <coughs> Coming back to this point again from yesterday, team is so important. I don't know if you find if you've gone through a hard situation or you go through a struggle, it's so good to get around people who can build you up, who can go through it with you. I've loved times where, you know where we went on a night hike the other week to Newlands Corner. I've had amazing times there where I've been with a couple of mates and we've just been praying and crying out to God. And praying, laying hands on each other, praying God's best on them. Whatever's going on in their lives. And just seeking God together. We learned this morning the importance of enjoying God individually. But also there's the enjoyment of God together. And corporately crying out to God. Get team around you. Surround yourself with them. Then Daniel went to his house and told his friends Hanan, Mishael, and Azariah about the matter, urging them to ask the God of heaven for mercy concerning this mystery. So Daniel and his friends would not be killed with the rest of Babylonian's wise men. The mystery was then revealed to Daniel in a vision at night. And Daniel praised the God of heaven and declared, check out these verses, they're great. May the name of God be praised forever and ever for wisdom and power belong to him. He changes the times and seasons. He removes kings and establishes kings. He gives wisdom to the wise and knowledge to those who have understanding. He reveals the deep and hidden things. Say that again with me. He reveals the deep and hidden things. Let's say it. He reveals the deep and hidden things. Love that verse. God knows the secrets of our hearts. He knows the secrets of our minds. What we've ever done. What, we've ever will, what we ever will do. He knows our hearts. He knows our thoughts. He knows the secrets. He knows the secrets beyond what you know. He knows the secrets of how the world was made. He knows the secrets of how the world is sustained. Things that scientists spend years researching, God knows. It's not like he's trying to work it out. Oh, yeah, and how many things have to be in place for that sun to be there? God just flung it out there. He just sustains it. He makes it simple for him. He reveals the deep and hidden things. He knows what it is. He knows what is in the darkness. And light dwells with him. Light surrounds God. I offer thanks and praise to you, God of my fathers, because you have given me wisdom and power. And now you have let me know what we asked of you. For you have let us know the king's mystery. Therefore, king, uh, sorry, therefore, Daniel went to Arioch, whom the king had assigned to destroy the wise men of Babylon. He came and said to them, Don't kill the wise men of Babylon. Bring before me the king, and I will give him the interpretation. I wonder how quick you are to stand up for other people. If I was Daniel, I think I'd probably go, Don't kill me. I've got the interpretation. Don't kill me. Daniel's like, Don't kill all these wise men. Daniel cared about people. He wanted the safety of all these people. He was, big, he was thinking about something bigger than just himself. Then Ariok quickly brought Daniel before the king and said to him, I have found a man among the Judean exiles who can let the king know the interpretation. The king said in reply to Daniel, whose name was Belteshazzar, are you able to tell me the dream I had and its interpretation? Daniel answered the king, 
No wise man, medium, diviner priest, or astrologer is able to make known the king's mystery he asked about. If only we stopped there. But, but, there is a God in heaven who reveals mysteries. I was listening to a sermon a few weeks ago about the but gods in the Bible. I love it. The but gods. But God, rich in mercy. We were covered in sin and shame and guilt. Everything of our lives was turned fully away from God. Whether we knew it or were aware of it, that's just how we were. We were born into sin. We were born as people who just turned our backs on God. But God, who is rich in mercy, has made us alive together with Christ. It is by grace you have been saved. In other words, there was nothing you could do about it. You were turned, you were faced, you were running towards the gates of hell. But God, who is rich in mercy, he basically, he grabbed you, turned you around and started you running towards Christ. It wasn't your decision, it wasn't a prayer that you prayed. It was God's mercy to you. It was his grace to you. Salvation is not about what we try to do to earn it. It's not about living a right life. It's not about pleasing people. It's not about going to church or reading your Bible or praying. Salvation is about God's grace and the fact that he forgives us and shows us mercy when we don't deserve it. We can't earn our way into God's presence. He saves us by Jesus dying on the cross and ex we're accepted then into God's presence. Oh, I love it. Do you love it? This is God's grace. This is amazing. I love it. But there is a God in heaven who reveals mysteries. Paul talks about, in one of his letters, I can't remember where, he talks about the mysteries of salvation and the mysteries of God. And kind of we often kind of think about God and think, oh, there's so many mysteries, oh, I just can't know them. The truth is, I went quite high there. The truth, the truth is, mysteries of salvation have been made known to you. You can have access to these mysteries. You're now a son. You're now a daughter. You have access to the mysteries of God. Brilliant. And he has let King Nebuchadnezzar, verse 28, know what will happen in the last days. Your dream and the visions that came into your mind as you lay in bed were these. Your majesty, while you were in bed, thoughts came to your mind about what will happen in the future. The revealer of mysteries has let you know what will happen. As for me, this mystery has been revealed to me, not because I have more wisdom than anyone else living, but in order that the interpretation might be made known to the king, and you may have understanding, and you may understand the thoughts of your mind. Verse 31. My king, as you are watching, a colossal statue appeared. Rory, just behind that door is something. Can you bring it out for me? You'll know what it is. Hey. Tall... <laughs> It's on the table, I think, just there. Tall and dazzling was standing in front of you, and its appearance was terrifying. That's it. Hey. 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 For anyone who hasn't, doesn't know, this is Nigel. Hey, Nigel. My king, as you were watching, a colossal statue appeared. The statue, tall and dazzling, was standing in front of you, and its appearance was terrifying. The head of the statue was pure... Gold. 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 Always believing. <laughs> Who's good with drawing? Anyone good with drawing? Gareth, you're good at drawing. Hey, Gareth, come up here. Actually, you, you can just get out of there. Can you, you've got to draw really quickly. Really quickly. Come quick, 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 quick. You need to draw. We're going to draw a body, okay? So I want you to draw a gold head. You do. Gold. Yeah, that'll do. That'll do. That'll do. Go, go, go. Gold head. The head of statue was pure gold. Its chest and arms were silver. Silver. Great. 
I want you to imagine, obviously, this bigger, it's a statue. <laughs> That's a special statue. <laughs> Wow. Its stomach and thighs were bronze. Stomach and his thighs. His legs were iron. And its feet were partly iron and partly clay. Can you give us some shading as well? <laughs> just quickly, you know, just... Well, it's, it's going to take some time, but... Wow, Oh yeah, so, so, so... So it's feet... And it's legs were iron, and his feet were partly iron and partly fired clay. Iron... There's a fire. Yeah, fire. Yeah, fire. This is exactly what the statue would have looked like. I have a drawing in my Bible. It looks exactly this. And it's hair. That's fine. Mate. That's fine. Just the just the fire, and we're done. Okay. And you can have a seat. Thank you, Gareth. Round of applause for Gareth. Today. Now set it on fire. Actually, before you go, I need you to draw one more thing. Verse, everyone was still there with the Bibles. Verse 34. As you were watching, a stone broke off without a hand touching it and struck the statue on its feet of iron and fired clay and crushed them. All I want today is just a round ball like stone. That's all I need. And they're coming like flaming. No, no, just, 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 just around the ball. Shave it in quickly and uh, we're good to go. That, mate, that's beautiful. That's stunning. Okay, you're going to come out and see me. Thank you. So, we've got our statue, head of gold, body of silver, thighs and stomach of bronze, uh, legs of iron and feet of mixture of clay and iron and a stone on the stone verse 34 as you're watching a stone broke off without a hand touching it struck the statue on its feet of iron and fired clay and crushed them then the iron and fired clay the bronze the silver and the gold were shattered and became like chaff from the summer threshing floors, the wind carried them away and not a trace of them could be found. But the stone that struck the statue became a great mountain and filled the whole earth. This was the dream. Now we will tell the king its interpretation. Your majesty, you are the king of kings. You are king of kings. The God of heaven has given you sovereignty, power, strength and glory. I love that, that Daniel points out to him. You're king, but you're only king because I made you. Like, my God made you king. We have authorities. They're only in power because God lets them be in power. Love it. He's an authority. The God of heaven has given you sovereignty, power, strength, and glory. Wherever people live, or wild animals, or birds of the air, he has handed them over to you and made you ruler over them all. You are the head of... Of, the, of gold the head of gold being the Babylonian kind of empire after you there will rise another kingdom inferior to yours that's, the, that's like the arms and chest that's referring to the Persian empire that was to come and then another 
a third kingdom of bronze which will rule the whole earth. That's talking about the Greeks. You learn about the Greeks in the school. Anyone learn about Greeks? I remember learning about Greeks. I loved it. Odysseus. Remember Odysseus? What a legend. Literally. Oh, can't teach that. A fourth kingdom will be as strong as iron, for iron crushes and shatters everything, and like iron that smashes, it will crush and smash all others. Anyone know who that's referring to? Who can guess? Romans. The Romans, brilliant. I love it, this is prophetic. This hasn't happened at the time of this prophecy, but it's about to come, and now we can see that it's being fulfilled. Awesome. It will crush and smash all the others Verse 41, you saw the feet and toes partly of potters, fired clay and partly of iron. It will be a divided kingdom. Yeah, this is the one. Uh, and part of it, it will be divided kingdom. Though some of the strength of iron will be in it. You saw the iron mixed with clay and that the toes of the feet were part iron and part fire clay. Part of the kingdom will be strong and part of it will be brittle. You saw the iron mixed with the clay the peoples will mix with one another, but will not hold together, just as iron does not mix with fire and clay. Verse 44. In the days of those kings, the God of heaven will set up a kingdom that will never be destroyed. And this kingdom will not be left to another people. It will crush all these kingdoms and bring them to an end, but itself will endure forever. You saw a stone break off on the mountain without a hand touching it, and it crushed the hand touching it. And it crushed the iron, bronze, fired clay, silver and gold. The great God has told the king what will happen in the future. The dream is true, and its interpretation is certain. Does anyone know what a stone is? The answer is always Jesus. It's Jesus. The stone is Jesus. Jesus came, and he crushed these kingdoms. Not in the way that the disciples were expecting. Not in the way that people reading the Old Testament were expecting. They were expecting a great warrior to come and conquer in lots of death and gore. But actually Jesus came and he conquered these kingdoms. He brought new life. He brought grace. He's conquered. He's won. We've sung about it tonight. Verse 46, we're almost there. Then King Nebuchadnezzar fell down, paid homage to Daniel and gave orders to present an offering and incense to him. The king said to Daniel, Your God is indeed God of gods, Lord of kings, and revealer of mysteries, since you were able to reveal this mystery. Then the king promoted Daniel and gave him many generous gifts. He made him ruler over the entire province of Babylon and chief governor over all the wise men of Babylon. At Daniel's request, the king appointed Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, to manage the province of Babylon, but Daniel remained at the king's call. Yes! And through Daniel too. It's good stuff, isn't it? Really good stuff. Tonight our topic is, get some desire in you. We're talking about spiritual gifts, and kind of looking at this gift that Daniel had. Daniel had the gift of, he had a whole mixture kind of right in there. He had a mixture of dreams, of prophecy and of interpretation as well. And uh, if you've still got your Bibles there, I want you to turn. I'm just going to read a little bit more. To 1 Corinthians 12. And verse 4. 1 Corinthians is in the New Testament. Corinthians 12, we're going to read verse 4 to 11. Now there are different gifts, but the same Spirit. There are different ministries, but the same Lord. And there are different activities, but the same God is active in everyone and everything. A manifestation of the Spirit is given to each person for to, to produce what is beneficial. To one is given a message of wisdom through the Spirit, to another a message of knowledge by the same Spirit, to another faith by the same Spirit, to another gifts of healing by the one Spirit, to another the performing of miracles, to another prophecy, 
to another distinguishing between spirits, to another different kinds of languages, to another interpretation of languages. But one and the same spirit is active in all these, distributing to each one as he will. Turn over another page to chapter 14, verse 1. Pursue love and desire spiritual gifts, and above all that you may prophesy. Another translation says, eagerly desire spiritual gifts, especially the gift of prophecy. Eagerly desire spiritual gifts. I wonder if that's true of you. Do you desire spiritual gifts? We're going to name them quickly here. Who can write? Who can write nice and big and neat? Oh, a girl. Girls can always write neat. No, 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 I need a girl. I need a girl. Girls are, girls are amazing. Come on, who wants to come right? Come on, come on. 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 Yeah. Flip back to 1 Corinthians 12, and I want you to shout out spiritual gifts that I mentioned today. Ready? First one. Healing. Prophecy. Tongues. You mean you just get like... <laughs> Tongue, the tongues, gift of languages. Pro. The gift of being a pro. Anything else? Interpretation of tongues. <laughs> yeah, please don't get freaked out by this whole thing of tongues. It, it really isn't like a whole. <laughs> it's just the gift of the <laughs> uh, Give me another one. Someone from the back. Oh, what about someone from the back? Give me one. Distinguishing from something. Good, good listening skills. Anyone from the back? Give me one. Read your, read your 1 Corinthians 12. Wisdom. Wisdom. Booyah. What is it? What are you saying down here? Distinguishing between spirits. Uh, wisdom. Wisdom with God. Any others? Faith. 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 Fair. H. I. N. Dot the eye. Dot the eye. Dot the eye. Dot the eye. What's that mean? Knowledge. 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 Lisa, what did you say? Knowledge. Knowledge being like words of knowledge. Okay. Uh, anything else? Miracles? Anything else? That's the. No, okay. Here's what I want you to do. I want you to turn to the person next to you and I want you to look at that list and go and think, firstly, do I know what all of these are? If not, which ones don't I know about? And two, have I got any of these already? You can do that in twos or threes. Go. <laughs> okay, here's what we're going to do. We're basically going to do now five minutes of Q&A on what you talked about in terms of maybe you've probably got questions, either 
I don't know what that is or whatever it is. Let's go for it. Ready? Who wants to kick off? Question. Nathan. So when, uh, so wisdom, is that like generally being wise or is it like specific in the things? Um, yeah. Brilliant. So is wisdom gener gen generally being wise or is it specific? What do people think? Uh, <coughs> being wise about spiritual things. Being wise about spiritual things. Being wise about spiritual things. Being smart. Being smart. To get A's in maths. Well, no, it's like uh, go with the smart decision, not do the stupid yeah. thing like I do. But that's why, isn't it like what old people are really wise because they've gone through all those not necessarily mistakes. So Solomon wasn't really old when he was wise. Yeah. 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 Uh, I'm saying wise like as wisdom is, is a lot of people on the franchise sit here and a lot of people a lot heard a lot of voices saying both and I agree with both. Wisdom as someone was saying about Solomon, Solomon God gave him wisdom. That was very that was very obviously a spiritual gift. So wisdom can be given as a spiritual gift. But wisdom is also something that just comes with time and knowledge and experience. So the Bible also very clearly says the wise man's crown is his grey hair. So that's why you generally go to someone older than you for wisdom. But there is occasions where God can support out as a spiritual gift for that instance for that time. And so you'll have wisdom. A young Christian person, a young person, may have great wisdom because that's what God has given to them lavishly as they become Christian. Next question. Maddie, hit us. Distinguishing of spirits. Distinguishing of spirits. Anyone want to answer that? Hit me, Gary. What do you? Um, is is that like uh, telling which like spirits like like voodoo and stuff like that are wrong and which one's right? So like ours is right. Or yeah, I'm pretty sure I, I'm like yeah, 100% national is right. And, like, <laughs> voodoo, like those wee wee balls are wrong. And and and. Is it like um? I think it was like Guy Miller who came a while ago before, and he was talking about when he was in India, and I think he he met a woman who uh, was possessed by a demon, and it, is it like that? And they I think they prayed I think they prayed for her, and she was uh, the demon was cast out. Uh, I think that's what I remember. Um, so is it like that, like casting out demons or spirits from? Things or people. Again, I'd say partly. Personally, I understand it is in like um, if you will, certain people will meet someone and then they'll kind of sense like they have a spirit of fear, for example, or something, and they can tell what's wrong with someone on a spiritual level. That's more how I understand it. So someone might be living under a spirit of fear or a spirit of rejection, etc. Um, yeah, that's kind of a gift. Yeah, I think that's really helpful. Uh, in terms of, I think it's a discerning of the spirits. So it's seeing basically kind of beyond our natural realm and seeing into almost the spiritual realm and seeing what's going on. I remember walking, I was in Bournemouth one time and I walked past this guy and there was just something in me I just knew, like I don't think I've known it in such a way before uh, or since. Just knew there was a demon on it. Just knew it. Like there was just a darkness there. Just my, I could just sense it. Everything. Like, and uh, I think that's something of kind of yeah, just distinguishing between the spirits, discerning where what's going on. Is there darkness there? Is there light? Is there a spirit of fear? You know, what both good and bad in terms of actually. I heard who is it? Julian Adams last year at Mobilize which is a students and 20s conference, was speaking about how many people here are aware of something kind of, you walk into a room sometimes and something bad happens, and like you can just sense something bad there. And like there are loads of people but like their hands up. And like how many people can go into a room and sense just angels in the room? Just a few hands. And uh, he said, kind of you have a gift for discerning spirits and yet you're kind of slightly oblivious to the good spirits. And so actually, I think that we need to kind of ask God and say, Lord, help me to be aware of where good spirits, help me to be aware of angels, help me to be aware of, of what you're doing and, 
like, I want to see where you're working on, I might join in. Does that kind of help a little bit? Cool, next one. Again. What is knowing the spirit close? Knowing the spirit close. That was what was it called? Manifest, like manifestation of the spirit. In terms of knowing the spirit, the Holy Spirit coming upon you in power, not just for gifts, but knowing His presence. I don't know if you've ever been in a meeting or at home in your room or something. You've been praying. Just I found it even as I've been speaking tonight. Just the presence of God. It's just like the Holy Spirit just resting on me. It's caused me to kind of jolt a little bit here and there, just like just knowing His presence. And I think that's what. Do you want to add any more? Or? I'd, I'd just say it's that it's the physical knowledge of manifestation means it's the physical knowledge of God with you. So people go, "Oh, I know the Holy Spirit," but but they they kind of think oh, they get like a. You know, they'll just feel good, and that's knowing the manifestation of the spirit. In this instance, when it was happening to these people, was the physical knowledge yeah. of God and the spirit there with them. So actually, seeing I said that we use the word tangible earlier. So actually, that's things that you can physically feel and physically know. Uh, of, that's what the manifestation of the spirit means. Yeah, don't be scared of that. Often we can. Can be in rooms and maybe there's screaming going on, or laughing going on, or crying going on. Like, what on earth is going on here? But it's great. God's up. God's moving. And for you, it might be completely different. Well, I don't. It, it will be completely different from the person next to you. And uh, I like to think of it like this. Like I always, when I was a bit younger, I always got a little bit worried, thinking, "What is that screaming going on? This is not right. I'm pretty sure this is not right." Well, that, kind of laughing, why is that person laughing? I'm like, pretty sure that's fake, that is, that's not real. And uh, I've kind of come to this conclusion. <coughs> Maybe not all of it's real, but I'm pretty sure most of it is. And if God's in it, I want to be part of it. If God's in the place, I want him to meet with me. And Lord, you can do whatever you want. <laughs> we had, can remember back in last term, and uh, we had just that incredible evening where God just met with us in power. For me, that was ridiculous. Like, I got up to share and just <laughs> bowled over in laughter. Like I've never known that like in that kind of sense before. It was something God was just doing in me. So great. Any more questions? Gary? Is knowledge is in knowledge exactly the same as wisdom? I don't get it. No. <laughs> so knowledge, I would I would more go down the route of words of knowledge in terms of kind of having words where God speaks and brings kind of a, a sense of what he's doing. Uh, uh, he brings kind of, so for example, a word of knowledge for, yeah. Yeah, so, well, so we read in Daniel, didn't we, in terms of reveals the hidden things. And so I might have a word of knowledge for Owen, going, Owen, I just know that, like, you were, last Tuesday, you were sitting in your room and, you were sitting next to a blue lamp, and, uh, <laughs> and, and you were watching Homeland, and uh, then suddenly the TV fell, and you got really upset. <laughs> and God just wants you to know He loves you. And, well, you know, but it's a it's a word of knowledge. Um, but like in terms of it brings knowledge of of hidden mysteries or of hidden things. Um, I it was when I did FP out in South Africa, I had a guy walk into the room, a guy Julian Adams who I mentioned the room, and uh, no one knew this about me, but I'd always desired, and it was probably something quite selfish in me, I'd always desired that someone would walk into the room and just go, I can just see God is all over you. Like, just the presence of God is on you, and he knows you and loves you. And for some reason, that was just something personal to me, that's just what I wanted. And I hadn't told anyone about that. And uh, as Julian walked into the room, he brought a friend with him, and he whispered into his friend's ear, and they just stared at me. I was like, what is this? I've never met this guy before, what is this dude doing? He's just staring, what an idiot. 
<laughs> and uh, literally that's what I was thinking. And we started the worship and this friend was standing next to me and the whole time through the time of worship he was just staring. <laughs> it's kind of really annoying. Like, I didn't really engage with God during the time of worship and went and sat down and just did a bit of a huff. Like, what, what's wrong with my face? <laughs> and uh, Julian gets up to speak and he points at me, he's like, what's your name? And he's like, he's like, oh, I was like, Nathan. And he said, yes, stand up. So I walked into the room and just saw the presence of God is all over you. And God just wants to meet with you in a powerful way. And then he went and shared kind of incredible prophecies over my life. But for me, it was just like, oh, God, no one knew that. No one knew that. Only knew, you knew that. And it just like, God just met me in a powerful way. Another instance on that kind of week, we were, um, all throughout the week, we were, there was this girl there, and we were basically making jokes about how she was going to be, uh, during the year at FP, she was going to be um, this guy's um, like receptionist, what's it called, PA. And because uh, he was just like, yeah, I've been in Durban all my life, and so you're going to be my PA. And she was from Newcastle. And uh, so we've been making jokes about it the whole time. And so Julian walks into the room, never met these people before. And uh, kind of a bit later on in the kind of afternoon, he's just like, yeah, what's your name? She's like, Kate. And she's like, yeah, I just feel like God wants to say to you, you're not going to be anyone's PA this year. <laughs> <laughs> Cool story. I love it. Uh, and yeah, I want more of them. Cool. Uh, one more question. If there is, if not, we can. No? Everyone knows what all these things are. Yeah. Tongues. What's tongues? Let's just quickly go on that. Uh, tongues is when you speak in like a language that isn't the language you normally speak. Um, so, like, you just say stuff that it's just like, probably this. Yeah, so that's a good question. So is it Spanish you, you or what is it? to say, like, if you like... So is, is it Spanish or like Portuguese? I was about to say Brazilian. <laughs> <laughs> Portuguese no, 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 and Chinese. It's not, it's not a known language that, like, more than one person knows. It's just that only you know. And it's personal to you. Why? Do, why? Why? Is it, is it like a, a spiritual language where God invites you... Uh, it takes, uh, your spirit with God. Yeah. yeah, so we're basically we're praying in a language which basically is giving our hearts to God. I, I, I get to the point, so I don't know if you do, I run out of words in prayer. And I'm like, oh, I love you, I love you, I love you, I love you. <laughs> oh, I don't know what else to say. And so I'm like, God, but my heart, my heart's there. I just run out of words in my mind. So you start praying in tongues, which is kind of the language of saying, my, my mind's still engaged and my heart's still engaged of praising and worshipping God. And my mouth can carry on as well. So I'm like, my heart's going, my heart's in it, and my tongue's going as well. And, uh, and so the gift of tongues is for two kind of reasons. One, it's for the edification of yourself. When I pray in tongues, it builds me up. It builds me up big time. It helps me to pray. It helps me to get in tune with God's heart. But also, in a corporate kind of session, where in a session where we're all together, when someone brings a tongue, someone needs to bring an interpretation as well. So if someone just brings a tongue, well, there's no benefit to it. There's, there's nothing gained. It's just, oh, that sounds nice, doesn't it? <laughs> I once heard this guy, and uh, his tongue was... Koala, 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 I can help with that, but actually, you know, you start with one or two words, so you might be there going, well, how do I pray in tongues? You start, you just start praying out with your heart, use your heart. It doesn't come by you going, I mean, the gift of tongues, Lord. <laughs> Open your mouth, use your tongue, start speaking. I loved the guy's faith in it. Carl? Um, some people do, like Gary said, that it doesn't come in a language which is known to the world, like, say, French or Portuguese or whatever, but, um, and that's usually the case of the person who's actually, says, like, speaking in tongues, but um, I'm not, I can't remember who it was, but someone told me that um, 
the church they were in, someone was shouting out in tones uh, at the end of the service. Um, they sort of one person, I think they were from China, um, went to those people and said, like, oh my gosh. <laughs> they literally spoke like one or two sentences in pure like Mandarin. Um, so just because you don't have a clue what you're saying, <laughs> that interpretation really, really can be an actual language. Yeah, I've been in prayer meetings at New Day where that is the same thing's happened. Where that's my language, and it, it means this. <laughs> Um, I, I also heard something a bit like that. Is about these people went to this massive like in like a contest sort of new or something, and uh, someone started like saying something, and then uh, someone someone came up. These two people were lost, and they they they, they heard this purple this person th uh, speaking. His eyes were closed, and they were looking at him, just thinking like, what? Because they were speaking. He, he was speaking Russian, and they were like Russian and. And then they, and he was basically saying, "Go that way, go this way," and then, and then went this way. And all that was like really cool. Oh, that's <laughs> <laughs> you know what I love about this is that to the kind of the world that we live in, these things are ridiculous. Not even a thought. But our God is an extraordinary God who loves to communicate with his people and loves to bless and loves to give us good, fun kind of gifts to use. And these are great fun. Our, my, my attitude in it is this. The verse that we read in 1 Corinthians 14 says, Eagerly desire the spiritual gifts, especially the gift of prophecy. My desire is this. Lord, I want them all. God, I'm greedy. I want every single one of them. God, don't miss me out on any of this. Lord, I want gift of tongues, I want interpretation, I want prophecy, I want healing, I want wisdom, I want knowledge, I want distinguishing of the spirits. I want it all, Lord. I want it all. And I want, that's why we're kind of entitled to get some desire in you. I want you leaving this weekend with a desire in you for the spiritual gifts. Spiritual gifts are used to build up others in the faith, but I definitely believe that they can be used to actually reveal God to other people who don't yet know him as well. And so gifts of healing, oh, I want some of that. I want to pray for the sick who don't yet know God and they're healed for them to turn to God for that. God will give me words of knowledge for those who don't yet know him that will reveal that he knows them and he's interested in them. Do you want some of it? Yeah! Sounds fun, doesn't it? Yeah.